Welcome to Mental Wealth, the podcast to invest in your mind. Here I will help you make sense of your mind and behaviours, giving you the tools to have your best life. There is so much to share, so let's get into this episode and explore another great topic. So welcome to episode 27. And in this episode, we are going to have a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the challenges that we all face with our balancing between work and life or life and life, whatever we want to put your attention on. And I'm delighted to say that I have a very special guest with me to share this space, Kirsty Knight. So welcome, Kirsty. Thank you so much for having me. Brilliant. So tell everyone a little bit more about you before we get started. Okay, so I am a business and mindset coach. um, And I started in that field because I was struggling with a work life balance. I had started a glamping business actually in 2015. And I expanded it a little bit too quickly. I was very enthusiastic to have my first business. And I doubled it in size. And it was just way too much for me to manage on my own. But I had sort of all this mindset mindset blocks, if you like, to hiring help and spending money on people, you know, helping me out to free up some of my time um, and just fears around it in general, a, a sense of um, that I should know what I was doing and also that I should be able to manage it all and juggle it all, uh, like a need to feel like I was in control of everything. All of those things were sort of the things that were making it very challenging for me to have a work-life balance. And I remember this one, this one time where my partner and I hadn't spent any time together for the whole summer, pretty much we opened in April. And I think this was August and I'd had maybe one afternoon off that entire time. And I was working from seven in the morning till midnight, pretty much because it was, you know, I was my own boss, I could do whatever, but I was doing all the things. So I was doing admin and ironing late at night and, you know, changing over the tents and cleaning the toilets, I was doing everything. And that afternoon we'd been invited to a a beach gathering for his best friend's birthday and we hadn't seen him for years he had moved to new zealand and i i said oh my god yeah okay we'll i'll definitely try to make this happen we we need some time off together and by the time i'd finished all of the jobs on the campsite to get ready to go it was about 3 30 by the time we got to the beach it was four o'clock and we were supposed to be there about midday and as we got there the clouds had rolled in it started raining and all of our friends were packing up their stuff and leaving and that was a very um oh it was like a hard hitting moment for me where i realized this isn't what i wanted this is not why i was you know striving to achieve in this business that I did not have a work-life balance at all and that something needed to change because I have never felt like more of a failure in that moment um, that seeing the disappointment on my partner's face and also for myself feeling like, what is the point of doing all this? And I think that that is one of the things that, particularly as women, um, ambitious women, whether it's in our careers or in business, if we're striving to you know, achieve and fulfill our potential and we've also got all the responsibilities of all the other things that we're doing, family, house, all the rest of it. I think it's really hard for us to find that work-life mm-hmm. balance. And I think we're very hard on ourselves. And that was kind of how I entered into the personal development world. Firstly, looking for ways to be more productive and fit more in and have more time, sort of create more time. And then after that, realizing that a lot of the struggles that I was having was coming from mindset. Um, and that's sort of how I entered the field. So now I'm a coach for women who are looking for um, looking to stop hustling basically in their business or in their careers and, and achieve more of a work life balance without killing themselves and feeling fulfilled and all of those things. Brilliant. And I think what's really important for me, having people as guests on this show is not just because you are running that kind of business, but the fact that you've lived it, breathed it, got the t-shirt, etc. And that's really important to me because that's me too. You know, I think that's one of the purposes of this podcast. And a lot of my work is to help people realize that they're not on their own. And actually, we are all doing this thing called life, which can be quite challenging. Uh, and I love it that you, you know, you've been really open there, Kirsty, and just let people know that 
you know, you you felt it so deeply that you then found something to do about it. And I think that sometimes can be the reason for people putting changes in, isn't it? Is because it has all gone horribly wrong. Or could we start to do things before we go horribly <laughs> wrong? Yes, absolutely. I think that the, well, the nicer place to start is just deciding, ah, oh, I, I want more of a balance. My life isn't a, a mess. But yeah, for me, that wasn't the, yeah. the option that I had. But I, I think it's fine. Wherever you start, um, if you know what you want, if you know that what what you've got right now isn't maybe working or you want more of it, like you want a better work-life balance, there's no place to start that's wrong. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we could all probably do some different things and hopefully we can chat about a few ideas in this episode. But equally, if you are listening in and it you can resonate with Kirsty's story or some of the other things that we're talking about today that you feel like you have hit that rock bottom place, then good, because there's only a change from there. Right. So let's first of all, Kirsty, have a little think about the kind of things that people should notice. Maybe if we did imagine that this was a, some sort of a conveyor belt and at one end is the the, the beach occasion for you uh, and at the other end is, you know, you're feeling quite organised with life because let's not pretend that life isn't busy. And somewhere, we're all somewhere on that. I mean, I have had to to, to arrange this call with you today, Kirsty. I had to put you off 20 minutes. So my, <laughs> my juggling was a little bit challenged today. So we're all doing it. I think let's just have a little think about what kind of things might people start to notice so that they know that they maybe do need to put more work-life balance in. What kind of things do you hear people say, Kirsty? Mm. So I think one of the first things to look for is is a, like your emotional experience, like what's going on for you. Um, if you're feeling overwhelmed, that's something that I hear all the time. Um you know, just massively overwhelmed, just feeling overwhelmed by everything, all the balls that you're juggling. Um, that's a, a sure fire sign that something needs to change. Stressed, and maybe you're, you recognize stress or anxiety rather than feeling overwhelmed. Um, that's a sure sign that you, there's something that maybe needs to be tweaked in your day to day. Um, if you're feeling frustrated, um, either by things coming up and like your plan not going to pl according to plan, because I think this is one of the things that when you enter that space of trying to be more organized or trying to get more in control of your time and have more of a work life balance, a lot of us start with a perfectionistic mindset of, right, I'm going to put this plan in place and this is how it has to be, but we're very rigid. And that actually causes more problems than it helps often because we realize like we start feeling frustrated when our plan doesn't go to plan and of course it's not going to go to plan because we've been battling through you know all the things that we're trying to juggle and and life will never go according to plan i, I never uh you know i teach time blocking but and I, I always allow for you know white space just in case and even if you have to move some things being kind to yourself and being okay with it is one of the the tools one of the skill sets that you need to learn to sort of better go with the flow because you absolutely cannot be rigid in your perfectionism around getting this right there is no yeah. right i think it, it really is like how can we just juggle all these balls dropping a few less than we have been you know we're never gonna have a hundred balls all in the air at once sometimes we have to set some down and press pause on some things and that's okay and i think that that's yeah. that's one of those things so if you're feeling frustrated that's a sign that um you know maybe you're trying this and it's not working and it's because you're being a little bit too perfectionistic so th those are sort of the core ones like overwhelmed stressed anxiety and then frustration yeah. as like indicators or from a more practical point of view indicators might just be that things that are on your to-do list for weeks and weeks and weeks like they're never getting tended to or you feel like if you've got a business or a career you're never making the progress that you want in your career um no matter how even if you're you think you're in a busy season one season and then that season turns into another season and then another season like you're never you never feel like you're making progress that's also a sign mm -hmm. um because i think as humans we feel we need to feel like we're making progress even if it's tiny tiny steps and so that's a, a sign if something is on our to-do list constantly or if we feel like we're not making progress those are yeah. other indicators that maybe something is off 
Yeah, I love that. And I think it is paying attention, isn't it? Being aware, firstly, to that feeling that whatever it is, whether it's coming out as frustration, whether it's coming out as overwhelm, whether it's even coming out of sadness, you know, just by lack of achievement, we can often feel quite sad. But I think one of the things I notice, and, and I can notice this in myself just as much as I can see it in others, is when we've got those feelings, whichever it is, we obviously want to get rid of that feeling because we don't like it. And what we do is we tell ourselves, if I got all of those things done and all of that done and all of that over there done, then I'd feel okay. Right. Of course, it's not realistic. (laughs) Because, But what I remind people is, if you manage the feeling, so pay a little bit of attention to the feeling and you said, you know, be kind to yourself, which is definitely a good space. Being able to just pause and think, okay, it's okay, I feel overwhelmed, let's just stop or let's just be kinder or pause or whatever you need to do. Because we that that sort of funny little thing that we all do, or it can be quite a big thing, where we start to imagine that we'll get everything perfect. Mm-hmm. And even down to, you now start looking at you, I'll just tidy under my stairs or I'll just do all the jobs that you just think, because you're trying to get rid of the feeling. Right. But, and I think that's, it's the feeling that we need to pay attention to because in that feeling, we won't be productive. We won't come up with good problem solving. We won't have innovation. We'll just have more of the same. How would you, would you say you hear something similar Oh, absolutely. I I think that, I mean, overwhelm, I often refer to as the least productive emotion, because when we're feeling overwhelmed, we typically do one of two things. We either sort of flip between tasks in like a frenzy, like a panicked frenzy, like trying to do a bit of everything when we're feeling overwhelmed, or we go into like a freeze state and don't do any of it, sort of almost ignore all the things that are pressing on us and go to do something else that's not even on our list. And that might be scrolling or it might be, you know, creating another job for ourselves. It's like just to escape the feeling. And really we want to process the feeling rather than just sort of buffer it away or sort of suppress it. Um, And for sure, yeah, I think that is one of the reasons why we struggle to have a work-life balance because we we think that once we've ticked all the projects off, our to-do list. We, once we get there, then we will have time to slow down. Then we will have time to, you know, give ourselves a break. And that is one of the main reasons why we don't establish a work-life balance is because we think that there is this promised land that we're going to get to. And I, and in this society, like how we are right now, with all of the connections and communications and opportunities and, you know, obligations and commitments that we are all doing. It's a very busy life for everyone. It's not like we live in the cave anymore or in the woods. And so there will never be a time. This is what I tell my clients. There will never be a time when you have ticked everything off that to-do list. Because often, particularly as women, when you're doing recurring tasks or maybe in your career, that you will have some project-based tasks, but some things that need to be done recurring. So in business, like marketing. Um, Even if you tick off all of those things for the week, they'll just be reset for the next week exactly you will never get to the end of your to-do list and that's okay and it is in the managing of your emotion around that and feel it like learning how to feel okay with an unfinished to-do list basically yeah and or allocating only enough for the day so that you are able to give yourself permission to take that break that's how you establish a work-life balance not by finishing all the tasks so I, I love yeah. that you brought that up because yeah, yeah for sure that is that is the problem <laughs> it is but we're wanting to get rid of that feeling so we imagine if i get all those things done whatever those are whether they're you're thinking about business life whatever families whatever it is all of those things it's not realistic no. it is it's absolutely not that so it is about if you are feeling overwhelmed it's about finding ways that you can manage that overwhelm Because what I also see is when we get frustrated with ourselves because we're not managing it, then you're you're almost doubling up the negative emotion. You're doubling up that frustration on top of your overwhelm. And then, oh, and that's where, like you say, you probably will do the freeze thing and just not do anything, which might be might be a solution. (laughs) In that moment, that could be a solution. You know, I'm a big fan of shut your laptop and go and do something else if you really feel burnt out. Absolutely. But I would say shut your laptop and go for a walk or do something that is 
uh, beneficial for you, like an actual rest activity, mm. not shut your laptop and go start another project or, yeah. you know, like, or I, I don't know, start scrolling on your phone that doesn't actually leave you feeling rejuvenated. Like mm. that, that those are the things that we typically do. And those yeah. are the things that don't save us. And you make a good point. I, again, all of this is me personally, just as much as anyone else. So often you hear people who have come away maybe from their work, wherever their work is, and they're trying to do something. And I'm using the word trying very purposefully. They're trying to do the relaxation, the walk, the the whatever your sport is, or craft or whatever it is that you enjoy doing. But your head is still over in the, the jobs. Or you're in you're working, you're trying to work, and your head is wishing that you were sitting on the sofa. Right. And I think one of the things I like to help people think about is make sure that you separate the two as, mm-hmm. as best as you can. Of course, the you know, the brain is very powerful and you will be having thoughts about your work when you're on your time off. But for me, there's something about separating the two so that if you are off, be off so that you yeah. get your recharge. And then if you're in work, be in work and try and keep focused rather than be wishing you were, it was the weekend all the time. You know, I think it's that, to me, it's that separation. Is that something else that you um, work with, Kirsty? I totally agree with that. I, I found for me as well, um, there were two things that I needed to do really that helped me with that. W- one is really learn that lesson that nothing is ever going to be finished. Like um, I'm on this journey of life and it's okay if there are always projects that are unfinished like actually being okay with that and giving you and telling yourself i have time because half of the problem is us telling ourselves we it, things are more urgent than they are and that i you know i don't have the time so really learning that lesson and within that uncoupling my worth to my productivity and my success to my worth sort of so that's like one piece of what really helped me doing that deeper work on that and then the second was basically using a tool like a calendar to delineate that for me to make it very clear to set those boundaries in place so for me i use time blocking and and i am very clear that this time is work time and this time is off and every time i do that and i'm not perfect like i obviously fall back into old patterns every now and again and sometimes i'll i'll catch myself you know trying to work when i said i wasn't going to work and and the same in reverse but when i'm really conscious about it and intentional and i decide okay no matter what i haven't done this is time off and i put that on my calendar it for me it really helps me give myself permission to switch off so mm. when i am off then it's almost like I, i've like i'm allowed to be off and and it's a really hard mindset to get out of it's almost like we've been programmed to think that we should be on all the time but that for me is just a tiny little hack that really helps is just having a calendar or a diary slot that says you know like set hours these are the things that i'm doing in yeah. the, these times and then this is time off to give myself permission because i agree otherwise it's very difficult because you'll constantly be feeling guilty that you're not working or guilty that you're you know that you should be working when you're not and and not enjoying your rest yeah i think so so we separate little however you do that like you say time blocking i i, I use that sometimes with people just making that promise to yourself that no matter what because we won't have finished, but no matter what, we're going to go and do something else and then do it and enjoy doing it so that you feel topped up. Otherwise, it's all a bit blurred. And I think, you know, this would be the same for somebody who is employed, you know, at the end of the day, that's the end of your day. So let's make it that and rather than have that feeling. But I think the other thing that I want to add here is if you don't, so you said you, sometimes you slip back in and you find you, you're working on days when you said you aren't going to. But if you do do that, let's not beat ourselves up for it. So because, again, that just impacts, doesn't it, on your your good stuff, on your feeling nice, feeling relaxed, feeling kinder to yourself. You know, if you do it, it's a bit like um, if you scroll on social media, for example, if you do it, and you've spent half an hour, and then you think, oh, that was a waste of time. There's no point in thinking like that, is there? So for me, it's, again, it's just that whatever you have done, be okay with it, but then decide, am I going to do the same 
the next day, the next day, and the next day. That kind I of totally agree. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. I think that giving yourself forgiveness for everything is always a better a better solution for moving forward and yeah. changing things and and compassion and oh of course i understand why i did that like I, you know we have a, a primitive brain we have a normal brain we're we're human of course we're gonna do think those things of course you know it's not a problem and then deciding again okay what what do we want to try next time yeah, yeah. never and I think beating ourselves up yeah i think so because you know scrolling on social media might give you some freedom for a while i mean you know my stretch there would be check in with what you're actually what listening to and watching and <laughs> absorbing because some of it is not always good for us. But if you do it and if that's how you sort of switch off and you relax, then do it and do it happily. But then if you know it isn't working for you, but you're still doing it, that's your time to think, OK, this is I'm coming off this feeling rubbish. So Absolutely. that's when I need to make a little change. Yeah. And I think part of that is really tuning into yourself. Like I, I will never dictate what people should be doing or how many hours people should be working. Like it's totally up to the individual. It really is about finding what works for you. I know for me, if like 10 minutes of scrolling through funny dog videos or whatever is, is great. It gives me a giggle. I, I like, I feel good about it. If I'm in, however, like, you know, feeling overwhelmed and in work mode and I'm supposed to be working, and I find myself scrolling through Instagram, I tend not to see the dog videos in that mode. I tend to see, you know, posts from other people, which remind me of the stuff that I should be doing and all the rest of it. I go into compare and despair. And I, I, at the end of it, I feel rubbish. And so I actually know that scrolling, you know, during the day is not ever good for me. And I, I can check in with myself and, and recognize that. So then I will do my best to avoid it. But again, not beat myself up if that's what happens, but just try to put in place strategies that help me not do that. But yeah, if that is your like, do you know what? I love scrolling for half an hour after I've you know sent all my emails out or whatever. Totally do you do you like you get to decide what works for yeah. you and what doesn't. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I think the other thing that springs to my mind when you were talking there, Kirsty, is about finding what works for you because what what works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. You might hear somebody else doing something and you think, oh, I could try it, see if it works for you. But I think, you know, for me, it's all of this is when do you work at your best? Is it morning, afternoon, evening, fit in around that as best you can. I mean, obviously, a lot of people who are self-employed can choose the hours that they want, but they end up probably usually working a lot more. But then we've still got all the employed people who I know there's lots of people listening to this podcast who work for a business, and they've got that balancing act sometimes to do and how they do it. I, I was working in a business last week, and one of the guys said that he does not think about work the minute he walks away from his job, if his friends um, are all chatting about work, he doesn't want to talk about his work at all. And he's literally got this. It sounds like like a complete <laughs> court. I've never heard. I've never ever known anybody to be able to do it. And he just said, "I won't do it. I just won't. I won't talk about it. I won't think about it until I come in the next morning, and then I'm full on, and I'm here, and I do what I'm doing." So in a way, he's he's got that thing that we've just been talking about going really well. I love it. Yeah. We we'll need to we all need to follow in his shoes. He he's nailed it. Hasn't he just? I don't think I don't know whether much of us, many of us would be able to do what he does. I, I certainly would struggle with that. But <clears throat> for me, there is just something around being conscious, as you said, about your choices and about your hows and your whens. And right. I think the other thing that we have touched on is finding that thing that works for you. So going for a walk might be for some people. It could be being creative. That's your space. But one one of the things I see, and I'm sure you do as well, Kirsty, is when people know what is good for them, that for them individually, and then they know that they're not doing it. That so often is the reason why you don't feel good. It's not actually all the other things that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that you haven't found the time to cook or make or get out into nature or go swimming, or whatever your thing is, and particularly creative people, of which we all are, but there are some that are very creative. And if they're not tapping into that creativity, 
their balance is out. Mm, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think I found that for myself, actually, um, at the beginning of this year, I I realized that I had shut down because I, I had other businesses aside from my coaching business. I obviously had the glamping business, but I also used to do property development and project management on construction. And at the time when I was going into coaching, I thought, oh, God, I've got too many balls to juggle here. And one of the things that I advocate for is streamlining and simplifying, you know, and so I really did sort of hack back all the things that I, I so that I could focus just on my coaching business. But what I ended up stripping out was an aspect of property development that actually is creative for me and I really enjoy. And one of the my realizations this year has been like, I'm, I don't feel as fulfilled as I did before. And so sometimes there is that, you know, that sort of juxtaposition of trying to not have too many things that you're taking on, but also not stripping out, you know, the things that feel really good to you and making time for them. So even though it takes up time, it's worth, you know, if you know yourself and you know what you enjoy and you know what fills you up, it's always worth making time for that. And I was thinking about that even this morning. I like I, I went out for a dog walk. I would do that every morning, every afternoon. And even though, even when I'm rushed for time, I will obviously I have a dog, so it kind of forces me to do it because he needs to go out. But it's I'm so grateful for that because I have to do it. And by taking out half an hour, it doesn't matter what kind of a funk I'm in when I leave, I always feel better. I'm always more productive, more focused, more clear headed, more, you know, I have more joy when I come back. So some things that take time actually create more time. We just don't realize it. So even if it doesn't look like it's creating more time, it does by filling you up. So I love that you mentioned that because I definitely think that, yeah, if you know that there are some things that you need to help you function at your best or just feel good because this whole, you know, life should be more enjoyable. And so if there are things that you can do that, you know, make you feel better, make the time for those things. And that's really more, more of the balance that we're looking for it's not necessarily like x number of hours working and x number of hours watching tv like it could be you know way more hours working but an aspect of the working is that creative part or it could be you know less tv and you're doing this other project that fills your evenings up but it feels really good to you and that's that's the balance that you want i think so i think that's where the 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 gem or the glue is in in this thing that we're talking about here with life work balance because if you I often say to busy people you know they'll say I haven't got time for lunch or I haven't got time to walk my dog at four o'clock but actually if you do pause for lunch go and take your dog for a walk I almost can guarantee and it's a big guarantee here but I can almost guarantee as you've just described Kirsty you feel better you feel refreshed you've cleared a bit of whatever it might be so I'm often saying to you know reminding people to to, to literally take that little bit of time it it's never going to be ours what we actually just have is that hang on a minute let's just pause I mean it's almost like a, a proper cup of tea. Sometimes when we're busy, we make a cup of tea. We don't really drink it properly. <laughs> right. It goes cold. And actually, if we just sat and drank that cup of tea, like you do when you go to a coffee shop with your friend and you sit and you actually drink the hot coffee in your hand. Mm. And even just that can just clear and help your mind so, so much. And then guess what? You're more productive. You're actually might have some idea generation. You might have some good stuff. So having the courage, I use this word really purposefully in business. I say to businesses, you know, if you've got the courage to take that time out, even in the day, even if you dare in the day, you will gain later. Oh, I love that you that you say that. And I love that you call it courage because I, I totally see that for myself. It, it really can be very scary to pause and take a break. Um, it, and that's one of the reasons why I first found personal development because I didn't have the courage really to hire someone to take a load off um, from me. And actually it is, you know, you do require courage to take that gamble to, yeah, to even to say to someone, I'm not going to finish that thing by today. Like I need to take a break. Like that, that m- might be something that you have to be courageous about, but if you can do that in little 
baby steps to build up more and more courage, then you yet you will be able to take more and more time out and, and you'll begin to establish a, a balance for yourself that is sustainable. Because I think that's one of the things that we all need to be working towards and that not many of us are because what happens is we burn out at the end of several years of hustling is that if we can just create a balance that means that we enjoy our lives and we're topped up and we're healthy, then it's sustainable. We can go for way longer. And that's really the goal. I, I always think if we could run a week for ourselves and then run the same week, so rewind and run the same week, but have the courage to take little pockets of time during the day or a proper evening doing something yourself that you love and then see how productive you are. If we could literally run the same thing and, and be able to measure how productive we are. That's why I know I can say, because I can say it for myself, when I do that, if I look after myself well, I mean, I've also got a, a new puppy and he's creating that space for me because I was working till seven, eight o'clock at night sometimes. And now I do stop at four-ish or whatever time, take him out. And might I might work a little bit more in the evening, but at least I've had that time and I'm probably fresher and better. But I would love if we could, uh, you know, if we could time time capsule and be able to just see how much more productive you are. I mean, I, I suppose we could all sort of measure it, couldn't we? Maybe that's a good thing for us all to do is to actually see, do you get more work done? Do you get a better quality of work? As, are there less errors in your work if you've had a better balance? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that I think that would definitely help with getting people on board with the idea initially because it it almost takes away some of the fear around oh, but I'm not going to get stuff done. And and the way, one thing I like to think about is the fact that the Pomodoro method which is, you know, well known for just helping you focus and get more stuff done is built on 25 minutes working, 5 minutes off. Like we are not designed to work for six hours straight you know we, we just can't we can't wait for three hours straight or even two hours straight so actually building in little increments of rest are is the way to be more productive um otherwise that that method wouldn't have even ever been you know suggested exactly. so i think that remembering that and thinking okay like actually this this could be the best way for me to be more productive um, and also i think that you're more intentional and i think that that is one of the keys to being more productive is is really being mindful and intentional with okay this is what i got to get done in this amount of time versus oh, i have all day to do it you know parkinson's law the task will just expand to fill the time given and so it being more intentional with your breaks helps you be more intentional with your work in between those breaks and i think oh. that actually you do get more done yeah i love that and you know what else springs to my mind when when you describe that is if if we did use something like the pomodoro is like you say 20 25 minutes and then a little break in that little break, you can give yourself an acknowledgement for what you've just achieved. Mm -hmm. Because another trap that we all fall into is we don't pause to say, hey, well done me, I got that piece finished. <laughs> we just move on to the next yeah. and the next and the next. And, and again, I hear this in business so often where people are not almost celebrating just the small wins mm -hmm. the, the, because they're too busy on there. Well, I've still got all this to do. I can't possibly. And yet you look back on the end of your day and you think, wow, I've done loads. And I always remind people when we were in school, we got feedback for every single thing that we did. So for however many years we all went to school, we our brains got used to having, yep, well done. That's good. You did that. You finished that. You finished it. And then we become adults <laughs> and don't do it. Right, absolutely. Well, and in school, I mean, uh, although the school system probably isn't the best for kids, like development wise, I think that they did factor in breaks. You had a break mid morning, you did I think, two hours and then you had a 20 minute break and then you did another hour or two and then you had a proper lunch break and then you exactly. did a couple more hours. And then you went home for the rest exactly. of the day. Exactly. So I think, you know, and also even within that, it was very much like, right, this is the task that we're focused on. Like we're in maths now, we're doing maths for an hour. And then even if you hadn't finished the maths, it's okay, we're, f we're stopping here, we're moving to science. And I think that if we if we actually took that approach into our businesses and into our careers, we would feel like, oh, we are moving the needle on more things. I think that one of the things that we tend to do is, is try to like, 
either juggle like 20 things at the same time so it's almost like being in the math class but getting out your science book and your history book and your geography book at the same time and spending five minutes on each that's also not very helpful but or sitting in maths all day and getting really bored of maths it's like i think that we do that to ourselves we don't um look at ways that really work well for us in how we work and one of those you already mentioned is like when do i work best is it morning or evening or afternoon or whatever but then within that you know it, do i need a change of you know subject every hour or do i need to give myself a limit do i need to pat myself on the back i think that yeah it, building that in yeah. almost as if you're your own you know classroom facilitator would be a much better way of managing ourselves than how we currently do it yeah i love that one of my little um hacks that i used to do sometimes do probably still now is if i've got a job to do and this this would relate better for self-employed people possibly than employed but it's still useful if i've got a job that i'm don't really enjoy doing and i'm probably going to faff about <laughs> let's be truthful i pretend or i used to pretend that if i was employing myself to do this mm. so i can either do it as a reflective piece so i can look back and think well would i be happy to pay myself for that hour was I, did I produce something decent? So quite often it was like, well, no. <laughs> or if I was projecting forward, think, okay, if I was employing myself to do this now, get on with it. Let's get on with it. And almost sort of imagining that you are your own admin assistant or your own kind of person that, so you say, I've got to get it done and I need to get it done in this time. Because if you yeah. are, and, you know, equally, if you are employing people, you know, you want to, you will want to know what what they are getting done, or if you are outsourcing, which I know is something you touched on earlier. You know, you'll want to know what they are doing, but we don't often do that for ourselves on our jobs that are least favourite. But we, but in it from a brain perspective, of course, you can do that because your mind doesn't know the difference between something that's real and not. So you can play with that sort of idea of saying, right, I've got these, I've got my books to do or something. I don't know. And I'm going to pretend that I'm going to pay myself to get these done. I bet you, in some instances, you will get them done. I think that's a great, I, I think that's a great little hack. And, and it could actually work if you're in a career as well. Like if you, if you actually at the beginning of sitting down in, at your desk, think, right, it's, will my boss be happy at the end of this hour with what I've produced? Yeah. It, it totally changes our mindset around it. And I think that when you're in a work um, situation, you know, where you do have a boss, the tendency is to think, oh, well, I'm being paid per hour and whatever, or, you know, I'm here till the end of the day. So it doesn't really matter. But then you're not getting the the re break that you need, the rest that you need. It's actually better probably to blitz through and then take a proper break, knowing you've done the the task. Um, you know, you can always argue that in your boss's office if they're like, "Well, what 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 are you doing for the second hour?" Well, I worked so hard that I got it done in the first hour, so I I could take a proper break. Yeah. I think that we don't advocate for ourselves in those situations very well. Um, yeah, to to basically work the best way that we can in the hours that we're working and then ha give ourselves a break. But I think with that sort of strategy in mind, often jobs in our heads, we create into something that's way bigger. So a task, <laughs> a task yeah. is, is way bigger, way more complicated, way more difficult, which again is all part of the imbalance in, in what we're doing, we might overestimate how long something's going to take or underestimate, oh, it's only going to take me five minutes. And clearly it's not. It's a good, it's a good piece of work. So again, for me, it's having the awareness of these kind of patterns. You know, if you know that you are a little, a shocker for underestimating something, be careful because that will cause you a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety or the opposite. If you imagine that it's a, terrible job and it's going to be so so difficult to do and actually quite often when people do do that and then they get on with it it's never as bad right yeah i totally agree i i, I did that once with my dishwasher just because i was obsessed with time and figuring out how, how i could fit things in because the dishwasher is one of those things like oh it's done oh i don't have time you know i'll do it later it was just one of those things like in my head i think it would take me like 10 or 15 minutes to do i don't know why but i obviously thought it was like a job and then i timed myself doing it once and it took me two minutes like two whole minutes went from when i set the timer and i emptied the whole thing and i was like huh 
doesn't take me long at all. So I can always fit it in pretty much. Like you boil the kettle and empty the dishwasher. And I, I just recognized then that pattern showed up for me in other areas. So I love that you said that. And, and then also the reverse is true. Yeah, like some things I'll massively underestimate. And I've learned through the process of awareness and checking in, um, even if it's like leaving the house, like I think that I've given myself enough time to get ready and leave. And then I, I, I always add on like an extra 15 minutes because I'm like, yeah, I'm probably not going to be quite ready. And then it, it will work out just right. So just knowing your own tendencies and then, and then, you know, work like hacking them so that you can actually work with you rather than against you, I think is a great tip. Yeah, I think that's the the overall message really, isn't it? For everything we've talked about is finding what's right for you and then finding within that little hacks or little strategies, little tools that you can then make this thing, which is to call time, which is called balance and, and make it kind of work for you in terms of your energy, in terms of what you've got to give, who you're giving it to. I mean, quite a lot, quite often I talk about, you know, giving your time and energy away to other people, which causes us a real imbalance. Not, not that we don't want to be helpful friends or helpful family members or helpful colleagues, but we need to be careful. There's so many different things that can cause us a problem in that department. I agree. I agree. I think, yeah, I have been a people pleaser in the past and sometimes I still catch myself. Um, but yeah, you definitely do want to have a, 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 a look over all the commitments that you've made and all the things that are going on in your week and how many of those things you're doing for other people and whether or not that is actually aligned with your values or whether or not it is just you saying yes or over giving um, to avoid feeling something about yourself. Yeah, definitely. So awareness is is one of our biggest tools that we have got for lots of things. But definitely when you're looking at balancing your commitments in life, whether they are your work life or your family and versus you, because that's another challenge, isn't it? Where people can feel like they're giving so much to their family, but nothing left for themselves, right. which I think we can identify can be more for women, but not not necessarily. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's just good. These the, I love these conversations because it just helps us all remember we're all in this together. But also, there are so many little things that you can do and just do them slightly differently, which can change up the whole outcome that you expect to get. Mm, absolutely brilliant. Is there one more thing that you've got, Kirsty, for us before we finish? Have you got one of your favourite little things that you like? to talk about um I, just one little exercise that i would always recommend as a starting point if you're looking at um you know if you if you feel like you don't have work-life balance right now it is to just do a time audit and it sounds big and scary but it can be really really simple it, and that is literally just every half an hour ha jot down on a piece of paper what you spent the last half an hour doing and if you can do that for a whole day maybe even more like the longer you can do it the better you'll identify patterns within yourself that will help you create awareness around where your time is going where your lack of balance is when you work best when you don't when you're dossing around you know under underestimating overestimating that all comes out in the wash when you do that little little tiny exercise that doesn't take any effort at all it's literally just jot down okay i spent the last half an hour emails you know or half an hour fanning around looking for something you know whatever it is if you do that as a starting point you can see quite clearly usually there will be like two or three things that if you work on, like mm -hmm. you don't have to perfect the whole week. It doesn't have to be, you know, we don't have to be robots here, but there will be a couple of things that are major time sucks or, you know, major time drains or that really aren't working well for you right now. And that's where you want to start wherever, it, you know, in your business, in your career and your personal life, that's where you want to start looking for tools and strategies. And once you've identified this is a problem. This is the thing. I think this is why I'm doing this thing. So yeah, What's that's that? just a f first thing. No, first I think that's thing. really good. I think like you say, that plays to the to more than just awareness because you've actually got evidence for yourself that you can right. see the pattern. So I think that's a brilliant shout. And um, yeah, hopefully some people will have a little think about doing that for them. Amazing. Well, thank brilliant. you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been brilliant. I've loved our conversation and I know that 
so many things that we could talk about. And I'm sure we can have you back again, Kirsty, because I think we've got other things we could home in on. <laughs> but hopefully that's given everyone something for them to think about. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. And interestingly, in next week's episode, we are going to actually focus on burnout. I've got a burnout expert, Keandra Ware. She's over in the States. So I hope you can tune in then. Thank you for listening and sharing in this episode of Mental Wealth. Remember, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast. My last question to you is what is the one small thing that you can take action on from this episode? Message me on Instagram or through our website with questions you'd like me to explore. You'll find the links in the show notes. I'll be back with more tools and tips to make sense of your mind in the next episode. In the meantime, be kind to yourself. Bye for now.